Welcome back everybody. In this video, our focus is going to be lesson number 56. And in lesson number 56, we are going to be learning about musical phrases. But before we do that, let's touch up on, let's touch on everything else we, we need to go over quickly so that we can focus entirely on the new concept. So we have a, a time signature of 3-4, so we're going to count to 3. The rhythms in the first measure and most of the measures are going to be as follows. One, and two, three. Pretty simple, okay? Uh, you are in the key of C simply because there is no sharp or flat occupying the space in between the treble clef and the time signature. Now, if there is no sharp or flat, you could be in the key of C or the key of A minor, but because we are starting by arpeggiating a C major triad, and because we are finishing with two, uh, an octave of C, end, that clearly establishes uh, the key of C as opposed to the key of A minor. Uh, let's see, what else can we go over? You're going to need to make sure you focus very closely on the fingering because there are some instances, like in measure 9, where you're actually going to have to play your ring finger twice, um, as well as your middle finger a couple of times. Now I know I've mentioned many times you want to alternate, but sometimes there's no way to avoid uh, there, the best approach would be to play the same finger twice, and here uh, you have an example of that. Um, we are going to play this lesson by ignoring the rests for now. At the end of the video, I will show you how to play by making sure that you are uh, uh, um, not ignoring the rests. But for now, we're just going to ignore them because most of the time we are just arpeggiating a chord. And so it's going to sound good anyways because all the notes that you're playing are a part of a chord. So it's no big deal. Okay? So we're going to let we're going to let everything ring, all right? So, let's get into the musical phrases. Now, a musical phrase is just a small little snippet of an idea that can be repeated or or modified in the next couple measures, um, but it's just an idea, okay? It's also gonna be usually where, uh, it's gonna be the length, the amount of time, I guess, that a singer would be singing with it, within one breath. So at the end of the phrase would be the moment where the singer would be breathing in order to sing the next phrase. And that's, we're gonna touch on, on the breath in just a second here. So our first musical phrase, our first musical idea, is going to be from measures one through measure four. So here's what it sounds like. And again, we're just gonna omit the rests for now. It's gonna sound like this. That's your first musical phrase. After that, we start over basically. There's no repeat sign, but we play in measure five the same thing that we play in measure one. So that right there is a hint that, okay, that's we're, we're starting over. So this is probably going to be the next musical phrase. The other thing is there is a break between measure four and measure five with those half notes. We play one, two, three. So it's kind of like if this were played by itself, the first four bars, It sounds like a very, very, very short piece with a, be a beginning, a middle, and an end. So that is also an indication that, okay, that's a musical phrase. That's one phrase. And those four bars would be, if you were to be singing it, you would sing all of that. And once you get to this measure, you would take a breath, and then you would sing the next phrase. It changes. That's going to be your second musical phrase. So together, when you uh, when you play them together, you're going to want to make sure you have a small little you want to take a small breath in between measure 4 and measure 5 as if you were singing it. So I'm going to show you what that looks like and what it sounds like. And for that one moment, the tempo just halts for just a second. 1 2 3 1 2 3. Okay? Let me show you. Just like that. 
like that. So very clearly you can hear one musical idea and then another musical idea. Now in measure nine, we have yet another musical phrase and it's going to be another four bars. And then nine, 10, 11, and measure 13, you're gonna have your last musical phrase and that'll be also four bars, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So again, I'm gonna play, uh, well not again, but I'm gonna play measure 13. I'm gonna demonstrate again the break uh, from one phrase to the next by um, breathing, basically. And that breath is gonna be just enough to separate the two, okay? Because it, it, uh, if you were to play it straight, it'd sound good. It, it wouldn't sound bad because musically there are some breaks, like I said, that half note is going to kind of separate the two regardless. Even if you were to play it completely straight, it'd be okay. But adding that breath is going to give it that human factor. And that's what's gonna make it sound more organic and more musical. So from measure nine to the end, sounds like this. Just like that. So try and do your best to separate the four musical phrases by just adding a breath. It's, it's as simple as that. Just breathe and then start counting again. Okay? Now at the end I do want to talk about some of the bass notes because there may be there may be some instances where you let go of a bass note a bit too soon. So let's take a look at measure, let's see, nine, ten. Well, let's start on measure nine. So we have uh, measure ten. We have this E in the bass. It's notated as a dotted half note. So when you play this measure it has to stay down while you play the two notes with your index and your middle finger here. And then the next measure, when you play that measure, this F on the fourth string, that's notated as a dotted half note. So make sure you don't remove it. If you were to play just the bass notes, I'm going to play measure 10, 11, and 12. You would hear this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay? That's what it needs to sound when you play it all together. You don't want it to sound like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Because that's not what's notated, right? So if it's a dotted half note, keep that finger down while you play everything else. So we're starting to separate our brain to make to do two different things, right? So here's measure nine. Listen to the bass notes, how they're ringing throughout. They're staying connected to each other from measure nine. I think I played a wrong note. There it is. But hopefully you heard this bass note. The bass notes connected. It happens again on the last four measures. You have this, which is just a C major chord, right, arpeggiated, but I'm keeping it down, and I'm connecting it to the, to the A in the next measure. Right, and then the next two measures, we have a G that needs to ring all the way up until the B here on the fifth string. You don't want to do this. You see how I'm lifting it up? I am I am disconnecting the notes from each other, and you can't do that. A singer is not going to sing that note and then stop in the middle of it, and then sing the next note, and then stop in the middle of it, and then sing the next note. Right? They're going to be continuously singing the notes uh, for the duration that they're that they that they're notated in. So you want to make sure that you keep your bass notes together. So from measure nine, listen to the bass. Don't listen to anything else. Just listen to the bass and how the notes are connected. Oops. Just like that. All right. Now let's go over um, how to play this 
by focusing on the rests. It's going to sound different and it's going to be a matter of preference. I believe most of the population will, will prefer the music to sound arpeggiated and with the notes ring because it sounds good. All the notes, like I said earlier, are going to be a part of a chord anyways, so it's going to sound okay. But if you want to give yourself that extra challenge, this is what I would like you to do. <clears throat> going back to measure one, <clears throat> excuse me. On measure one, you're going to make sure that when you play C, the third note, you're going to stop the third and the fourth string with your index and your middle, the fingers that you use to play the strings. Oops. So that all you hear is the C. When you play the next note, the E, the final note in that first measure, with your index finger, your thumb is going to return to the fifth string and stop that C that you played earlier, or in the previous beat basically, from ringing. You're going to stop it from ringing. So together, in, a sl in, in, slow, in slow motion, <coughs> I should say, it'll sound like this. So there were two things I did there. I'll do it even slower. Stop the notes with my fingers. Now I play this one, E, and I stop the fifth string with my thumb. It sounds a bit cleaner, right? Because not the, the notes aren't ringing together. And that would be the technique that you use throughout the lesson. It happens fairly often. course you breathe and then you start again uh, so on and so forth and that's how you would play uh, specifically those first eight bars it's it I make it look easy but it's, it's not it's not it's gonna take some practice a lot of coordination uh, uh, coordination concentration uh, focus and try and avoid the frustration that may come about because you, even when your fingers of your right hand aren't playing a note they're gonna have to do something so it's a lot to think about uh, last thing add a crescendo on the second musical phrase um, it'll sound nice just let you know so you have this I'm gonna go ahead and arpeggiate and let the notes ring I'll play a little faster too sounds pretty nice right because the harmonic um, the harmonies are changing they're they're evolving there something's happening something's brewing so we're just gonna kind of push and, and kind of accentuate that right measure nine same thing oops you want to play this a little, a little bit louder than the beginning because we've crescendoed into measure eight now we've reached a higher level of volume basically and also because the melody is now on the first string you did play the first string once but that was it it went up and then it kind of came back down now in measure nine the melody has gone up it's gone up so we're gonna you know okay the melody's gone up let's let's uh Let's just go with the flow, right? <laughs> Decrescendo and a writ to finish it off. All right. So there's lesson 56. Hopefully you understand what I mean by musical phrases. And hopefully as I was playing it, you can hear how I am separating the musical phrases um, and allowing everybody else to hear what I'm hearing or what you, uh, well, that's what you would be doing, right? You learning how to get people to hear what you are hearing in the music. All right, we're gonna be doing the same thing in lesson 57. So I'll see you there.